What's up, guys? It's your favorite QB coach, and give me six months of your time, and I'll give you the best golf swing of your life. So welcome back to the channel. In this particular video, we're gonna be reacting to another Athletic Motion Golf Pro vs. AM video. We're gonna be taking a look at the shoulder movements between an amateur golfer and professional golfer. There's gonna be some massive different movements between the two. And then ultimately, we're gonna discuss some other parts through the golf swing that tend to change when the shoulders move the way that they move. So if you're interested in the shoulder movement, how to move correctly more so like a pro, this is the perfect video for you. And let's go ahead and jump in. But before we get into the video, I wanna give a quick shout out to our sponsor and that is Kiwi Golf Japan. If you did not know, YouTube does not pay as a bill. So if you wanna help support this YouTube channel after the video is over, there will be a link down below. Go ahead and sign up through that link. You'll become a Kiwi Platinum member, get access to a bunch of videos and help support this YouTube channel. With that out of the way, let's get into the shoulder movement, pro vs. am, let's go. So before we get into the video, I do wanna give a shout out to Athletic Motion Golf. If you guys wanna see a bunch of pro vs. am gears breakdowns and you speak English, they are one of the best channels on YouTube to go ahead and do that. So they will have a link down below where you guys can go check out the channel. Again, everything is gonna be in English, so you have to speak English. But if you do, it is a really great channel. We highly recommend checking it out. Now, with that out of the way, let's go start this video and start talking about the differences. Pro vs. AM, what are the differences in the shoulder? In this episode of Pros vs. AMs, we're going to take a look at some very common right shoulder movements with professional golfers and compare those to what we commonly see with amateur golfers. We've got our multiple PGA Tour winner here on the left, and then we've got our amateur here on the right. And we chose two golfers with very similar body builds, very similar fitness. Um, so what they're trying to do is they're trying to explain this is going to be the pro over here on the left. This is going to be the amateur over here on the right. Now, not only is this an amateur golfer, it's going to be an amateur golfer that has a very similar body build to the professional golfer as well. They're trying to hit the same style of shot. Now, the re main reason why this is important when it comes to an analysis, you're trying to get the two to be as similar as possible. So to give an example, let's say this is a pro golfer with a really athletic body type. This would be an amateur golfer who's completely overweight, who is also trying to hit a completely different top style swing. It wouldn't be the most in-depth analysis, right? So that's kind of what they're trying to do right there is they're just trying to build credibility to their analysis. And now that you guys kind of got the overall point, Let's get into the first major movement, which is going to be really kind of from setup to right around P3. And then we're gonna go ahead and react to that. So we just start scrolling these golfers back. And again, we're using the gears bones feature in these shoulders uh, videos, cause it's easier to see. And in this one, we're doing a little. Okay, let's stop it here and let's start to kind of break down basically position two and kind of the differences between the two. So first off, like they were stating over here, this little red arrow is gonna represent the left shoulder movement. The right arrow is going to represent the right shoulder movement. And already from address to right around position two, you can already start to see a little bit of differences between the two. So first off, for the initial movement of the pro, we can see that it's pretty much diagonally out towards the target line. Now, as we start to approach P2, there is a little bit of an arcing in this arrow as well. However, the overall movement is more so diagonal and there's very minimal arcing with this red arrow, which would be the left shoulder. Now, already with the amateur golfer, Yes, it's also moving out towards the target line. However, the amount of arc is already a lot more than it is towards the pro, which just means that this left shoulder is starting to move, yes, kind of down and out, but it's also right around this point starting to arc upwards, which is going to be one of the major differences that you're gonna see throughout the backswing. The overall height of the left shoulder is very, very different between the overall height of the left shoulder with the pro. So this will be something that we gotta to continue to look for. Now, when it comes to the right shoulder, notice how the initial movement is going to be away from the target line as well. There's definitely an arcing motion to start the movement before it starts to go a little bit more diagonally away from the ball and it kind of straightens out that leftward movement. Now, if we take a look at the pro, yes, there's a little bit of an arcing motion to start as well. However, the overall arc amount is a lot less. And then from there as well, just like the amateur golfer, then it starts to straighten out as it starts to approach P2. So what we're seeing here is when it comes to the left shoulder, the movements are very similar between the two. However, the arcing amount is a little bit more, so that left shoulder is a little bit higher. And then also to start the swing with the amateur golfer, the overall movement of the right shoulder is almost a little bit kind of almost down and then starting to go up versus the amateur, or sorry, the pro doesn't really have as much of that movement. 
So let's skip ahead and go to position three because there are some other pretty big differences at position three as well. Let's skip to that. A little bit of a of transparency so we can see as the shoulders start moving back and forth. It's just, there's a lot going on here uh, when the shoulders start covering up other parts of the body. So this will make it a little bit easier. And the blue arrow represents. All right, let's stop it here. So we're pretty much right around position three at this particular point. So now when we take a look at the overall body image, let's just take a look here at the amateur versus the pro. We definitely are seeing a pretty big difference already. So we're starting to see this shoulder right here really get close to the chin. And this will be something that you're gonna see more of as we approach the top of the swing. And then with the uh, pro golfer, we're gonna see the chin is a little bit higher relative to the shoulder. So the shoulder is not really covering the chin as much. That'll be something that we definitely continue to see. And the major reason why is going to be because of this arcing motion, the severe arcing motion that you see in this left shoulder, which would be this red line here. Now, when we take a look at the left shoulder movement, we can take a look at the overall amount or the length that is traveled is a little bit more than the pro. And then obviously, like we said before, from P1 to P2, the overall arcing amount was definitely more as well as we got to that point. Net result of this movement, we're gonna see that this right shoulder here looks like it's in a completely different position than uh, the pro golfer over here. So the pro golfer, we can see that the axis of the shoulders is a little bit steeper at this particular point, which is definitely a common trend we see. And then the amateur shoulder axis right here is a lot flatter than the pro golfer, right? So we got the, basically the shoulder right here pretty much covering up that chin. Then we see the overall axis of the shoulders is really flat. And then here the chin is a lot further away from the shoulder. And then also we're seeing the axis of the shoulder is a little bit steeper. Now, when it comes to some minor things like maybe wrist conditions as well as club shaft position, subtly different as well. But for the most part, we want to keep it with the shoulders with this video. So let's continue and let's take them up uh, towards the top of the swing here. It's, it's tracing the right, uh, excuse me, the right shoulder and the red arrow is tracing the left shoulder. So as we take this golfer, both of these golfers up to the top of their backswing. All right, let's stop it right around here. Okay, so now we can start to see some pretty big differences between the two, specifically when we're talking about the left shoulder movement as well. So as we start to get towards the top, so right around P3 to the top, look at this overall arcing motion, right? It's quite severe here. It almost makes like an American U at this point. And then now there's also a little bit of almost like a snake image, right? So we're seeing another arcing motion in the opposite direction. And this is just going to get the overall shoulder movement to be going really far upwards, vertical, and see how much it's covering the chin at this particular point in the golf swing, right? So the lead arm is definitely covering the chin quite a lot. Now, also, if we take a look at the pro here, we're gonna see that the pro definitely has some arcing in it as well. However, there's just, first off, only one arcing motion. There's not a second one. And then the overall arcing amount is a lot more subdued. And the overall line from the address to the top of swing is a little bit more direct. And then this one over here, obviously we can see that the overall length that the red line has is shorter than the pro. And then there's definitely a lot more wobbliness or movement going along here, which gets the shoulder where we talked about with the amateur golfer over here. Now, as we start to see the top of swing with the shoulder movement, we're definitely seeing a little bit of a weird movement with the amateur golfer, which I do wanna talk about for this right shoulder. So take a look at the arrow direction. So it's had a really severe arc towards the top. So it's already starting to kind of push out towards the target line quite early versus if we take a look at the uh, pro, yes, it's also starting to have an arcing motion and starting to move out towards the target line. However, take note that the overall arc amount is way less sharp than this amateur golfer here, right? So this is a very acute angle here, a very sharp arcing motion. This is a little bit more subdued and this is a little bit more of a different motion. Now also as we get towards the top, because of the overall arm position here, we're gonna see that this trill elbow here with the amateur golfer is starting to get a little bit heavily internally rotated, which just means that it's a little bit more in this fashion towards the top, than the pro golfer who's a little bit more holding that external rotation position. Then obviously we're gonna see that the wrist conditions are a lot different between the two as well. And some of that could be traced back to the shoulder movement, but also this could just be the you know grip difference or something like that. So that's not something to be worried about at this point, uh, particularly in the golf swing. But this is pretty much the top of swing differences and already we're seeing a pretty massive difference. Last thing I should note too as well, just like we talked about at P2 and P3, the overall shoulder axis of the M is much, much more flat than the professional shoulder axis at this point as well. So let's continue to move forward and let's get into some of the downswing things because there's definitely some interesting points there as well. To see some um, 
pretty big differences here already. And, and if you remember from the left shoulder video, we know that a lot of amateurs have the, um, have the uh, tendency to raise that left shoulder up. And we can see that right here for sure. And whereas the pros have a tendency to kind of keep that same level and then actually lower it in the downswing. And we can see how that really. So like you was just talking about the pros basically moving towards left side lateral bend slightly more as they actually rotate the rib cage where the amateur golfer, if anything, might be moving slightly towards right side lateral bend and losing that axis in the shoulders as they rotate the rib cage. And then also another thing I should bring up, which you really can't tell in this video, so and it's also not super, super applicable, but definitely I think has some effect. With the amateur golfers, if you have watched the lead arm death video that they created that we also reacted to, we know that the lead arm typically tends to go a lot more across the chest with the amateur golfer than the pro golfer. And this is definitely making the overall arm structure shifted more behind the player um, as well. So that's just something to keep note of. But let's continue and let's go down to the downswing. But we're going to start to see some uh, key differences here as we start the downswing. So as our amateur golfer starts to downswing, we can see his arrow really start to take out kind of towards that ball target line. And All right, let's stop it here and let's start to react to it. So let's go over the right shoulder first because that's what they were talking about in this video. So as we start to get up towards the top, remember initially it started to have a very really sharp arc directly towards the target line. But now it's also arced one more time and now the shoulder is not moving at the same amount in terms of out as it was initially, but it is still moving quite far out at this point in the golf swing, which is a telltale sign of most amateurs, right? That right shoulder really drives towards the golf ball and that starts to get a lot of things really going wrong here. Now, if we take a look at the pro here, yes, it had this smoother arcing motion and it was initially moving out towards the golf ball, but there has now been another arcing motion. And now look at where the direction that the shoulders are moving towards it's much more diagonally down, but away from the target line and not out towards the target line. So this is going to be a key point here in the video, and this is going to be a major difference between pro and ams. And it comes into that whole idea of that amateur golfers typically, for whatever reason, have been taught that they should be rotating as much as they can these days. So we're seeing this more and more common with amateur golfers where that right shoulder movement is just going directly out towards the golf ball. And that's going to get them back into kind of that old steep pattern that used to be really uh, prevalent with amateur golfers back in the day. And then now it's becoming more and more prevalent um, just with the modern golf instruction. So this, these are definitely some major key points here. All right, that's it for you guys on YouTube. But before you guys click off, let me give you some quick wrap up points when it comes to this video. So by far, the amateur golfer swing that we saw in this video is very classic to what we're seeing here in Japan. And it all has to do with this whole rotational craze that went on. I feel like rotation is very, very powerful and it's very effective. However, at the proper sequence in the proper time, and that's something that we always try to reiterate in our videos, you know, there needs to be kind of specific ranges, not just rotate as hard as you want all the time. So when it comes to this video, I think we're really focusing on the right shoulder to demonstrate this in this particular video. And one of the key movements that's probably going to make you want to get that early rotation is just the overall left shoulder movement throughout the backswing. We tend to see those amateur golfers as they start to approach kind of P2 to P4, the left shoulder starts to almost kind of raise and that just gets the overall hand path going more and more vertical. And then from there, typically people shift that outwards towards the golf ball and that will get that right shoulder to move out towards the ball as well. So if you're struggling with this move, I would probably target that first and then go ahead and try to fix it. And if you guys want to hear some more details about the shoulder movements and get the whole video that was uh, actually filmed, definitely make sure to sign up for a membership site. Not only can you watch this video and 300 plus more videos on that site, you can also help support this YouTube channel and allow us to continue to make videos for you guys. So definitely make sure to check that out, like, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next video.